Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome. I'm here with my partner, John Coleman, and the one and only, the inimitable John Mariani, our virtual gourmet. How are you doing, John? I am very well, thank you. John, as our um, official Celebrating Act 2 expert on food and travel, I have a travel question for you uh, uh, about Detroit. Uh, what kind of condition is it in, particularly now that it's got COVID-19 and things are shut down left, right, and sideways? And I, poor Detroit has been a basket case in my mind for many years. And is it any worse now? Has it gotten any better? Is there any hope for this city? Up on, if we were talking back in March, after I'd made a visit in January, I'd say, I'd say, John, it is now worth going to visit. They have a new convention center. They ripped down the old uh, sports stadium, going to have a brand new sports stadium. They have this terrific new restaurant on the 72nd floor of, uh, of their biggest skyscraper, uh, which used to be called the Renaissance Center, and the, it, a really wonderful restaurant. All these great things were happening. The Museum of the Institute of Art is, is one of the best in the United States. That's what I would have told you last February 28th. I can no longer say that because I haven't, A, I haven't been back, but I do know that it's been stopped in its tracks. Sure. And you are right that for many, I mean, decades and decades, uh, Detroit has struggled. I once in an article uh, in Esquire magazine described Detroit as mostly looking like the back of a radiator. And <laughs> it was, I mean, you, you would go through mile after mile after mile, um, which had been depicted in many movies, most movies about Detroit, um, and mile of burnt out houses and terrible decrepitude. They used to have uh, hell night there, which I don't think they have much anymore, in which kids, teenagers would just set fire to houses on, on Halloween. Just set fire to houses, old derelict houses. Um, it's not that bad anymore. Now, they went through, in 2013, they went into bankruptcy. Now, that was only seven years ago. And they only came out of that in the last year. And <clears throat> its population had declined in 1950. They had almost 2 million people living in Detroit. Now there's only 700,000 people living in Detroit. Holy mackerel. Yeah, it's astonishing. And if you walk around the streets, even when I was there, in this uh, boom, boomlet time that I was seeing, um, there just aren't, there's not a lot of people on the streets. Um, and then you look across to uh, Windsor, uh, Ontario there, um, and they've got a couple of casinos there, and they're hopping. And I'm not enough of a historian or, or social sociologist <clears throat> to tell you why uh, what was one of the greatest of all American cities, fueled by uh, the American auto industry, where everybody had jobs and uh, was Ford and, and, and American Motors and, and Chrysler and GM, why... And as of the 1970s, it went into such steep decline, I can't tell you. But at this time, um, if you go uh, while the sports venues are closed, and uh, I don't know about the museum, but it, it really is a top, top-notch top museum. But one beacon of hope is this place, as I said, called the Highlands. And it's on top of what used to be called the Renaissance Center, <clears throat> which when GM bought it, it's now called... The GM Rensen. GM Rensen. Oh, it sounds like, sound like a Japanese washing machine, you know. And it is it. The, the uh, hotel itself is in much need of um, upgrading. Um, but this brand new hotel, which just opened last fall, December actually, um, put a lot of money into it. It was a Las Vegas company who said, "We are betting on Detroit coming back." big time, and we will be the biggest time of all. And they have a terrific chef partner whose name is Sean McLean, who was in Las Vegas. And I first knew Sean's work when he was uh, one of uh, Chicago's best chefs. And um, they did the, the, the plans, and they're, they're going to have a place where people could store their cigars, humidors, and their own scotch, which they do have. And they had a casual part. They had a more uh, slightly formal part uh, to it. 
excellent American food. And then whoop, it just had to shudder. Well, as of June 13, a, few, a couple of months ago, <clears throat> it reopened. And um, it's on the 72nd floor, so there's not, not a heck of a lot of outdoor dining there. They don't have a terrace out store, but you can go. you got to be cleared with the mask. And you go up there, and now they have a $71 fixed price four-course menu, and uh, which is a very good price. And a wine list of about 200, 200 uh, labels. And within that 71 courses, I have the menu in front of me. In front of me. You can have a Wagyu beef tartare with smoked egg yolk, marrow toast, uh, chilled king prawns with sorrel cream, sugar snap peas, lemon zest, and radishes. Um, really good ricotta agnolotti with roast zucchini, cherry tomatoes, eggplant, balsamic puree, um, uh, painted hills, New York strip steak with uh, whipped potatoes, um, and all sorts of other uh, raw oysters, fresh oysters, um, and wonderful, wonderful, big, generous uh, Midwestern desserts. So if you are going there and you want to see from the top of this this once great uh, building, um, you can see east, west, you can probably see about five states <laughs> from the top of it. It's a wonderful place to be, and I really do hope that it is the beacon that I hope it can become when the city is back to whatever normalcy means in Detroit. Yeah, well, that's great. Uh, it's good to hear that Detroit has hope, and uh, I wrote down the name of it, the Highlands Restaurant at the top of the Renaissance Center. Pardon me, Rensen. Jim Rensen. By the way, I was thinking of Jim something Rensen. here. Well, it's not exactly a day trip for uh, any of us. Uh, do they have uh, a to-go list, a to-go menu? Because no. if we could all meet there, get a to-go menu, and eat in the parking lot. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> Who's going to go? I mean, first of all, the Renaissance Center, as extraordinary as it is, is an architectural marvel built by uh, Portman. Um, it looks like a set from um, uh, Forbidden Planet. You know, when they when they take them the the trons or whatever, and they look down. Yeah. And that's twenty seven thousand floors of uh, of machinery. It's kind of like that. So to just say, you know, I feel like some takeout uh, to get to into the Renaissance Center and up in the elevator and be yeah. cleared and to put in your order and pick it up and go down. I mean, this is going to be ice cold to start well, with. Well, I remember the Rens Renaissance Center and it had towers and tower. I don't know how they were numbered or lettered, but you getting from one tower to the next and all the lobbies and oh, oh man, totally confusing. Yeah. But well, there's showrooms uh, downstairs. There's showrooms for uh, John's yeah. cars. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, John, good advice on Detroit. I hope I, I do hope they come back. It's a it was once a great city and yeah. have been down too long. So it's good to hear there's hope for them. And if yeah. you could, John, uh, just uh, uh, where's a good place for people to go find out about what you do? Just go to johnmariani.com and you can read everything I write. You can buy my books. You can uh, subscribe to my weekly. Uh, virtual gourmet newsletter, which is free, um, where I'm serializing my newest book, which is a novel called Love and Pizza, which everybody seems to like a romantic comic novel. And um, get all sorts of goodies free. It is a great fun read, by the way. Uh, R Love and Pizza. I love it. Um, and I hope at some point you're going to be able to publish it as a book and make a buck off it, but it's great to read it for free. <laughs> that makes working sense. On that right now in a, <laughs> what he says, the toughest, toughest environment for publishing he's seen in his entire 40 year career. But I, I but I see that when you're ready for a book tour, one of the first places that we're going to stop on is the Rensen in Detroit. <laughs> and then we can all meet for dinner at the Highlands. What do you yes. think? Yes. Finally. I love it. See you then, John. Thanks. Okay, thanks. See ya. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.